Hello chaps, welcome to John Robson Guitar Tuition once again as always. I do hope you're well. Today I'm going to show you a great way of adding a little bit more depth and detail and perhaps sophistication to your blues and blues rock lead guitar playing. More than any other style of music, I guess blues and blues rock is most associated with uh, just riffing away on a pentatonic scale. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Please don't think that's what I'm implying. But there is more that you, that you can do above and beyond that. And, you know, why limit yourself? Um, so let's start off by taking a look at a jam track. Uh, what you're going to hear now is a typical kind of A minor jam track of the kind of thing where most guys would, and girls, would play um, A minor pentatonic licks over the top of it. Here it is. Okay, so here's an A minor pentatonic, there it is, and we could use that scale over the top of that jam track, but there's more we can do. For instance, you'll have noticed in the chord sequence that there was a G chord in there. That G chord contains this note here. This is a B note, um, so why don't we add that into the pentatonic scale and get something like this. There's a B note there. There's another one there. There's another one there. So, that's an A minor pentatonic with a B note added in. But it doesn't stop there because also in the chord sequence there was a D chord. And that D chord contains this note. This is an F sharp note. So if it's there in the chord sequence, let's add it into the scale. Now we've already added the B note, so that's kind of in the bank, as it were. Let's start adding the F sharp note in. There it is there. And there. And that is now uh, an A minor pentatonic with an additional B note from the G chord and an additional F sharp note from the D chord. Um, but it's just much simpler to call it what it now is. This is the A Dorian mode. And here's a solo where I use the A Dorian mode over that jam track. Okay, and as you can hear, it gives you, um, you know, just that little bit more detail and depth and, as I said earlier, a little bit more sophistication than just uh, staying on the, the bog standard pentatonic. Uh, you have to, obviously, know whether or not you can use the uh, these extra notes to, that make up the Dorian mode over any given chord sequence. And for that, you need to be able to spot whether you're actually playing over a Dorian mode chord sequence. And I'm afraid this is the bit where you need to uh, dip your toe into the water of music theory. Brace yourself. Right then, 
here are the three keys, the three major keys, which contain an A minor chord. There is the key of G major, where A minor appears as the two chord. It's the chord based on the second note of the scale. The key of F major, where A minor is the three chord, based on the third note of the F major scale. And finally, the key of C major, where A minor is based on the sixth note of the scale. Now, putting this into the context of modes, if you have a chord sequence which is based on the minor chord in the 2 position, so that would be an A minor chord in the key of G, you are in the Dorian mode. If you have a chord sequence based on the minor chord in the 3 position, so an A minor chord sequence using chords from the key of F, then you are in the Phrygian mode. If you have a chord sequence based on the minor 6 chord, so this would be an A minor chord sequence based uh, on chords from the key of C major, you would be in the Aeolian mode. And by far and away the two most commonplace modes used in rock music are the Dorian mode and the Aeolian mode. The Phrygian mode does occasionally get used, but it's uh, nowhere near as much as the Dorian in and Aeolian. So what we're going to do now is basically take a look at how you can tell uh, whether you can use Dorian mode licks in your solos. And it all comes down to looking at what's going on in the chords. For instance, if you have um, a song based around an A minor chord, where at some point you descend by four frets to an F chord, F major, it doesn't have to come straight after the A minor as long as the F major chord is in there, then you are not in the Dorian mode. That will probably be the Aeolian mode. It could be the Phrygian, but we're going to uh, bypass that for now. Uh, so that is not the Dorian mode. How can you tell when you have got the Dorian mode? Well, if you have a minor uh, chord, in this case again A minor, and at some point in the chord sequence you ascend by five frets to a major chord, which would be D major in this case, then you are in the Dorian mode, and you can confidently use any of your Dorian mode licks. And here are some real-world examples of this kind of thing in action. For example, Oye Como Va by Santana features an A minor chord going up five frets to a D major chord. That's Dorian mode. Uh, Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. D minor chord goes up five frets to a G major. That's Dorian mode. It's Too Late by Carole King. Uh, a minor once again going up five frets to D, again Dorian mode. Wicked Game by Chris Isaac, B minor chord goes up five frets, becomes an E major chord, Dorian mode. And finally White Wedding, Billy Idol, B minor chord again, once again going up five frets to an E major chord, that is Dorian mode. So any of those songs, if you're playing a solo on those, you can use your Dorian mode licks. Aeolian mode songs would include Stairway to Heaven, which has an A minor chord descending four frets to an F. Sultans of Swing, which descends four frets from D minor to B flat. A Gary Moore tune, The Loner, which descends four frets from G minor to E flat. Um, the Trooper, Iron Maiden, descends four frets from E minor to C major and all along the Watchtower, which descends from a C minor down to an A flat major, that's a four fret drop, giving us once again the Aeolian mode. And you couldn't use your Dorian mode licks over any of these songs, um, but we'll have a look at the Aeolian mode in a future video. Okay, so that explains a little bit, hopefully quite simply, about how you can uh, spot where to uh, play the A Dorian mode in terms of a solo, or any other Dorian mode for that matter. Um, but the Dorian mode also has another trick up its sleeve. Uh, it's a great scale to use in a blues, okay, where you'll be playing typically over an A7, for, in this key, um, centered chord sequence you know 12 bar blues in here where you'd have a7 d7 and e7 or anything else where you're kind of gravitating around that a7 chord uh, and getting that kind of bluesy sound in these kind of situations many guitarists would um, including myself would uh, use the a minor pentatonic as a, in its kind of blues scale uh, guys you know just to kind of get that uh, bluesy um, 
classic blues rock kind of sound um, but also we can here uh, use the Dorian mode here's um, another jam track uh, that you can uh, do this sort of thing over and then we'll have a listen to a solo over the top of it So that is kind of a, a, a funky blues kind of thing based around an A7 chord. Um, and here's what it would sound like if you were to jam over the top of that with the A Dorian mode. think you'll agree that just sounds that little bit um, more detailed sophisticated a bit more depth than just uh, staying on a, a standard uh, pentatonic scale type uh, thing so there you go that is um, how I use and how I think about the Dorian mode uh, when I'm playing lead guitar it's a great scale for just adding um, a little bit more um, as I said detail and depth into a solo so try it out for yourself obviously uh, you're going to need to be able to spot uh, whether or not a chord sequence that you're going to be jamming over is in the Dorian mode so just try and absorb some of that theory that we went through earlier on and you know obviously you're not always going to be playing in A minor so you know make sure you can transpose this into B minor, D minor, E minor, F sharp minor any other key where you're going to uh, need to play a lead guitar and in all of the uh, demonstrations that you know earlier on I, I kind of stayed around pattern number one of the pentatonic scale but there are other patterns of the pentatonic scale as well so make sure that you uh, learn how to adapt your pentatonic with the additional notes in the remaining pentatonic patterns and well that's pretty much it for today both jam tracks uh, that I've used in this lesson are available for download from the description box below this video so why not grab them and have a go yourself and just a little bit of an update now on guitars for good causes which uh, involves a guitar which is very much like this one this is a Harley Benton Fusion Pro maple neck HSH Bengal finish okay this one is mine um, but there there was one that I reviewed for uh, guitars for good causes um, a few weeks ago now and it is still up for sale you've still got time to get your bids in November the 12th 2018 is the cutoff date for that make sure you've got your bids to me uh, for that guitar by then and you know basically send your bid to the um, email address that you can see on screen or at the end of the video and um, just tell me how much you're willing to pay for the guitar then on uh, the due date on November the 12th um, I will inform the winning bidder that they are the winning bidder and if that's you what you got to do is uh, make a donation to Zoe's Place Baby Hospice which is a charity in Middlesbrough which provides palliative respite and end-of-life care to children under five with terminal illnesses 
make your donation uh, of the amount that you bid for the guitar send me confirmation of that donation then I send you the guitar uh, if you're outside the UK please contact me first before bidding because we may need to have a, a little bit of a conversation about shipping costs and so on it can get quite expensive sending guitars internationally and also uh, there has been another guitar up for auction in the same way this is a Harley Benton SC 1000 um, which also I reviewed earlier this guitar was donated to the guitars for good causes campaign by a very generous viewer to this channel you know who you are thank you very much for that uh, the cutoff date for bids on this guitar was Halloween October the 31st and uh, unusually uh, no bids came in for this guitar I'm afraid to say um, th these things happen uh, so what's happening is I've got this guitar up for sale privately in the, the local area and any proceeds uh, that this guitar raises will go once again to Zoe's place I will keep you posted on what happens with that um, so that's pretty much it for today folks thank you very much for watching and thank you for your time I'll just round things off with the usual plug for my uh, Skype lessons. If you live uh, or if you want some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, then get in touch with me via the details at the end of this video. If you live on Teesside in the northeast of England, then you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson. Or wherever you are in the world, you can have a lesson via Skype. And whichever way you do it, your first lesson is, of course, free. So you've got nothing to lose. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day. Thank you so much for watching and hope you found this useful. If you have, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I'll see you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks.